For only the fourth time, BMW has wheeled out the number eight for one of its production cars. Throughout the company's long history, that number has been reserved for its top-of-the-line Halo models. First to use the 8 badge was the original 8 Series, a luxury sports coupe launched in 1990. BMW next used the number 8 in the year 2000 on the retro Z8 Roadster. More recently, the i8 hybrid sports car reintroduced the number to BMW's model range in 2014. And now, with the return of the 8 Series, that number has been used for a fourth time. Like the original 8 Series, this new model is a luxury sports coupe. There are two models to choose from. Top of the range is the M850i X-Drive with a turbocharged petrol V8, more than 500 bhp and a £100,000 price tag. This is the 840D X-Drive, the six-cylinder turbo diesel model that costs from £76,295. This diesel model is less of a sports car and more of an everyday Grand Tourer. So whereas the M850i tries to set your pulse racing, this 840D tries to slow it down. The 3-litre engine develops 316 brake horsepower and 501 pounds-foot of torque. Delivered to all four wheels via an 8-speed automatic gearbox, that's enough power and torque to launch the 840D to 62 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds and onto a top speed of 155 miles per hour. Within the cabin, there are two small seats in the back and plenty of space up front. There's also a very generous boot. Now, by and large, the quality in this cockpit is very good. There's soft leather across all the surfaces. Generally, the build quality, the material quality, fit and finish, all very good. However, some of these buttons just feel a little bit cheap, a little bit plasticky to me. And also, what do you think of this cut glass style gear knob here? I'll leave you to make your own minds up about that. Generally, it's a good cabin, but I have to say, unremarkable. It's actually made to feel dated by the BMW i8's interior, and that car is now five years old. The latest iDrive system is brilliant though, or it is once you've taken the time to familiarize yourself with its various functions and sub-menus. Eventually, you navigate it almost on instinct. There are several driving modes, including Sport Plus and Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro, as well as an adaptive mode. Your view from the driver's seat is dominated by two enormous digital screens. The central one here is a 10-inch screen. You control that with the iDrive control down here. It's also a touch screen as well, though. The screen in the instrument binnacle directly ahead of you, that's a 12.3-inch screen. Actually, rather than being bewildering, those two screens work really well. They only seem to give you the information that you need once you're on the move. You notice within the first few meters that this is a very particular sort of sports coupe, much more in line with the civilized, very luxurious Mercedes S-Class coupe than it is the agile, athletic Porsche 911. It's very quiet in here. The ride quality is excellent as well, thanks in part to standard fit, adaptive dampers, and the powertrain is very smooth. It all means that this is an effortless car and it's supreme over long distances as well. The car is easy to drive in town, thanks partly to BMW's integral active steering. It uses a variable steering ratio plus rear wheel steering to reduce steering effort at low speeds. Once up to speed, the steering is very accurate, very precise, very naturally weighted, but it's completely devoid of any feel. There's no sense of communication through it at all. That's what tells you, as much as anything, that this car is a GT car rather than an out and out sports car. Having said that, when you do flick it into one of the sports modes, Sport or Sport Plus, and then into manual for the transmission as well. It does begin to feel pretty agile. It's responsive, it's got tons of grip and plenty of body control. The four-wheel drive system, meanwhile, gives the car good traction in very slippery conditions, but by and large, most of the time, this car just behaves and feels like a rear-wheel drive car. It has plenty of overtaking punch too, if not exactly Porsche 911 style acceleration. You could almost forget that this car has a diesel engine. It doesn't make any of the clattery sounds that we normally associate with diesels, and nor does it have a very narrow power band. In fact, it's a fairly responsive, fairly powerful motor. Although it is a pity 
that the engine sound that's synthesized and piped in through the speakers isn't a little bit more convincing. BMW claims a very respectable 47 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. The automatic gearbox is really well suited to the car. It's not as quick as a twin clutch transmission when you're in manual mode, but it is far smoother. This car is loaded with interior technology and safety assistance systems. We've got, of course, sat-nav and Bluetooth come as standard. There's also wireless mobile phone charging and even gesture control. Standard spec includes driver assistance systems like collision warning, pedestrian warning, which can even alert you when a cyclist is about to cross your path. You can optionally upgrade to BMW's driving assistant professional, which includes things like lane departure warning and lane keeping assist. That particular package we could do without, but the rest of the interior technology and the standard assistance systems all help to make the 840D a soothing, calming, everyday car. What it isn't, however, is a thrilling sports coupe. Instead, it's a very good Grand Tourer. If a thrilling sports coupe is what you're looking for, you'll prefer the M850i xDrive, or better still, wait for the forthcoming M8, which is likely to have more than 600 horsepower. Thank you for watching. Please comment below, like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. There, you'll find lots of new car reviews, just like this one. We also do used cars at CarGurus. In fact, you will find the used car you're looking for at cargurus.co.uk.